So we're finally going to take this and turn it into a Truggy. And we have a cool body, I think, we're going to get. Yeah. Bam. We're going to throw the easy run in there. I think we're also going to try this servo. We'll see. And then somewhere, I don't know, somewhere we've got receiver. Oh, here we go. And then, bam, we got a receiver for our fly sky. Uh, we just need to get some fronts, you know, some rears for the front to make it very uh, truggy ish. And uh, I think that's all we need, right? Yeah, motor, receiver, servo. Should be good. Let's get it together. So, here's some of the stuff that comes with your roller. We got this roller when it was on sale a few months ago for like $80. It was such a killer deal. We should have bought two. We should have bought two. We were going to just use this for parts, but you know how that goes. Zip tie. What, what's a zip tie for? I don't know what zip ties for. I don't know what that's for. Servo mount. Servo horn. Pinion. And screws. All right. Let's get everything in there. So, unfortunately, our aluminum servo horn that came with the Pro Roller will not fit on this uh, servo. So, we have to use the plastic white horn. Also, it's like super long. So, we're going to trim it down. Uh, we also think it sets back a little far, so we'll probably have to find a way to shim it forward. And, um, yeah, we'll get it figured out. So we've got so many different servo horns. This one's kind of thick. We think we're just going to cut this in half and basically mount it as kind of our shim here. Just to give us a little bit extra space so that we can be a little more forward. And that will hopefully be enough. So that we have an okay angle. We don't want we, want we don't want it too far back, of course, because then you have like this crazy angle on your drag link, well, on your steering link uh, to your drag link. But we figured getting it forward a little bit more will definitely be helpful. Uh, we're not going to probably be able to get as far forward as we like without some really long screws and maybe two of these, but we'll see how we get with this. Bam! Like so. Got just enough spacing in there. Again, we could always go a little wider, put two in there, double it, um, push it forward more, but I don't think we need that. We're gonna run it like this for a little bit and we'll see how it does. Just gotta get her mounted in there. Should be good. So we like to try to hook things up as we go and test them and make sure our servo is centered, things of that nature. Our ESE comes with a plug we do not use, so we're gonna have to swap it over. We use these guys. So we're gonna chop that off, get a new, uh, new end on there. So one way that we solder these little guys, these are the ends that go into our battery plug. So we'll throw them on here, make sure they're nice and straight, and then we use blowtorch. And we basically just take our solder and our blowtorch, we heat this up just a little bit, just a little, not too much. Go ahead and dip our solder in there. bubbled like that we should have heated it up more before we stuck our solder in but whatever it works and then we've got our wire end which we're nice and warm and we can dip her in Ta-da! And the reason we do that is because a soldering iron takes a while to heat this up, this brass piece. So we can just use that torch, kind of get it in there. And ta-da! Just like so. All right. Then you can just throw your plugs right in. Of course, you can use a soldering iron, but like I said, these take a little bit to heat up. A little bit faster with the torch just kind of let it pool in there and get it warm and dip them in and you're good to go Alrighty, we got it on there uh, our angle's not ideal you want it to be as perpendicular as possible we'd have to scoot this up quite a bit we may still end up doing that at some point right now we're just going to leave it as it is um, we'll see how it does uh, we, we made sure we turned everything on bound up our radio centered it so we're completely centered then you put your servo horn on make sure you're centered everywhere 
and you can tighten down your servo horn screw. Okay, and don't forget to set your endpoints. It's very important. Basically, when you're setting your endpoints, you just want to make sure you get your max steering without uh, threatening the uh, the servo horn or the servo itself. You can kind of see it, it maxes out, and then it can still go. That little bit of still go is not ideal. So you want to turn that down quite a bit. And actually, on our Mini Zs, we've been experimenting with using uh, our endpoints as our adjustment for basically our um, like our door, our rate, our steering rate. So instead of using rate and and turning it down to like 80% if we're getting too much turning, we'll actually leave it at 100 and we'll just turn down our endpoints so that we don't get as much steering through our endpoints. So. We think that that is a decent way to do it. I've been talking to some other racers and whatnot, and they like it, so we figure we'll try it. Just want to make sure you're equal on your left and right steering. So we'll, we'll mess with that when we got that. Right now we're not equal, but it looks equal. Maybe we need a little bit more on our, our right. Maybe, maybe, maybe it is. I'm sure it's not being helped by the fact that our geometry is kind of goofy here. But again, we'll mess with it more later. We just want to get it up and running right now, and then we can tune it. We decided to go ahead and do these now. So we're adding another millimeter and a half, two millimeters. So we're gonna go from a M2 by six to an M2 by eight, and that'll get us the length we need. All right, we got it a little bit better. Our angle's much better. It's not as extreme. We're forward another millimeter and a half-ish. And we think we're gonna lay out like this with our switch in the center and this there. So let's get that all mounted in there. So we use this uh, double-sided tape. Uh, I'll try to link to it in the description below just in case you're curious what it is. And we got everything laid out. Try to keep it as clean as possible. We just gotta get our motor in now. So far so good. So something interesting of note on this here hobby wing, there is no flat side. A lot of the uh, shafts usually have a flat side so that you can mount your, uh, well, tighten your grub screw down onto it. This has no flat side. We do not like that. We do not like that there's no flat side. Uh, usually means you have to tighten your grub screw down extra tight and i um, not a fan of that. So usually they strip. We're gonna grind off just a little bit of a flat spot. Sorry, we're doing it. Now, we didn't do much. I mean, you can probably barely see it, but we did just go ahead and flatten it just a little bit. That'll hopefully help our pinion stay without spinning. Okay, and our pinion that came with the Pro Roller uh, and the motor mounting points seem to mesh up nicely, even without the adjustable motor plate. Worst case on these, you can always just kind of drill out the center between two of the holes and you can slide it and adjust better. But this mesh um, using the stock holes it could be a little looser, just a little bit, but I think it'll do for now. You can't really see it, but there's a little bit of play in there. Not as much as we'd like, but it's not tight, so should be fine. Uh, ideally, we'd have just a little bit of, a little bit more space so you could see the teeth rock back and forth a little bit in there better. Um, but we should be okay. Seems good. And here we have it. We're 
how tight the slipper clutch is on this. Better to be a little tight than too loose. Just have to check it after we run it a few times, tighten it up if we need to tighten it. All right, I guess next we need to we need to get some some uh, rears on the front, so we actually are more truck like, and uh, get a body on this thing. Let's see what we got. All right, we got our uh, AJC mods, high downforce rear wing. We'll put a uh, we have a video just building this and showing it. It's quick and easy over there, and um, yeah, now we're gonna put on our uh, scuff racing shock protectors and shock tower protectors and then we're going to get a body on it bam we're doing this so we've got a video about this body or whatever cage we'll put it over here um we'll show where we got it how we made it and whatnot um we we'll probably need to remake the front here we we're just kind of experimenting and trying to see how to set it up the shocks going through there were kind of a pain we need to make it a little wider um because we did bend out the, uh, the the frame here on our uh, the original plates that go on here, they're heavy, thick like steel panels, and they're they're heavy. <laughs> so we pull them off, um, but they're it's more narrow because, like I said, we had to round this out for the shocks. We talk about it in the video, so make sure you check that out. This is what holds the front on. We just basically clipped it, and it's able to hold the front through the shock tower. And then we actually right here. Are able to mount it where the stock mount goes for the normal body so and we talk about how light this body is in that video and everything too so definitely check out that video if you're interested this body this, this is super light like it's it's super light not quite as light as the lexan but pretty dang close uh, you'd be surprised i think it's only like 10 grams heavier maybe maybe eight something like that so anyway we basically tuck these in here you can see Kind of dark in there but we basically just push them through the shock tower and it holds just like so we usually just leave the body on yeah we definitely need to make it a little wider because before we put the uh, panel on it was clearing the shocks completely and the shocks weren't touching any part of it but because we tried to keep this looking like that and we didn't go wide enough it's now kind of rubbing on the uh especially with these on here now because these scuff racing shock protectors are make it even thicker so we'll remake this but for now this is what we're gonna run and then this just tucks down in the back and we're able to just take our regular body pan here and stick it through the hole and kind of slide it into the, uh, the original body pin mount. Just tuck it in there, and we're able to push this through. And it kind of just holds it like that. See how that's in there? And it's not coming off, like, no matter what. <laughs> you would have to break it for it to come off. We're gonna run this on the carpet track, so we'll get some video of that here in a minute. Uh, We'll probably have to put our, uh, if we ever run it outside, we're definitely going to put our transmission or spur gear pinion cover back on. And uh, we need to get some new fronts. These are just some old ones that we had. But yeah, we're digging it. Tell me what you think. What do you think about this build? We want to do a truggy. We want to do something kind of different. We are inspired by our SCX24 that uses the sim body, but in Red Bull. It uses the blue can Red Bull. And we just thought it'd look pretty sick on a mini T, mini B truggy. Anyway, guys, let's get to the video. Jesus. <laughs> that thing
You broke it. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video of the, the build and the running of it. And uh, I think this little guy is awesome. I hope you think the same. And uh, why don't you put down in the comments below, Rockstar. Rockstar. Because, well, it's a rock star. And uh, yeah, be sure to like, subscribe, share, hit the notification bell so you know when new videos come up. And uh, yeah, check out those other videos on this build if you didn't watch them. Hopefully you... Uh, you're enjoying the content that we're making. Until next time, get out there, run your cars, smash them, crash them, bash them, but don't break the expensive parts.